Welcome to Teachers Talking Teaching, where we celebrate and elevate the art of teaching. We're back with Teachers Talking Teaching this week, and we're talking with Tammy Wolf, who is a middle school teacher educator, and she teaches English and literacy, and we are excited to hear from her today about her origin story. So Tammy, how, what got you into this profession of teaching, and how did you decide to end up where you are today? Cool. Thank you. Um, well, I've, I am one of those people who've always wanted to be a teacher and so when I was in like second and third grade I would make my little brother sit there and I would like give him homework Mm -hmm. and blah 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 Um, and I thought for a long time that I wanted to be an elementary school teacher until I spent time in a middle school and that's when my heart like started to sing Um, I think now it's called the PACE program it's like a program where high schoolers can do work and get high school credit for doing work and so I spent some time in an elementary school my senior year And I was like, no, I don't know if I love second graders. And so, um, and so, and then I started spending time with some middle schoolers in back then, because I'm, I'm a product of PSD. Uh So I went to I stone Wellington and then Poudre Mm -hmm. high school. Um, and so I was spending some time, um, in a seventh grade classroom because back then it was seven, eight, nine Mm -hmm. in junior high. Um, and, and I just really liked it. I liked the connection that I had with middle schoolers. Mm-hmm. So I decided to go down the secondary ed path. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I went to UNC in Greeley mm-hmm. and I was there, got my English language arts degree, went to CSU, got my secondary ed degree. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I met my husband in the program and we spent our first two years of teaching in the Peace Corps. So we were in the Solomon Islands, which is over by... Um, Fiji and Australia, Mm -hmm. and we were both teachers in the Peace Corps there, so we spent two years there. Then we came back, and um, we were not ready to get back into mainstream yet, so then um, we spent a couple of years teaching out in the bush in Alaska, um, right Mm -hmm. outside of the Valdez Arm down in a little mm-hmm. community by Cordova. Um, and so we were there for two years, and we called it our paid Peace Corps experience yeah. because <laughs> it was really remote. We were with Native uh-huh. people again, um, but we were getting paid this time <laughs> instead of volunteering. Um, and then we went and taught off the coast of Maine um, mm-hmm. for a year in a community, Deer Isle, Stonington, Maine. Um, and then life brought us back here. So we call it like some kids take a gap year Mm -hmm. we took like a gap eight years (laughs) (laughs) and so we came back here and I started teaching in at a middle school in Loveland um surprise got pregnant with twins Mm -hmm. we don't have twins in our family so um I took some time with them and got my master's in English language arts or English education for Mm -hmm. secondary school um and then was working in a middle school eighth grade for Mm -hmm. Um, a while and then went back and got my um, educational leadership degree Mm -hmm. master's Um, and then now I am still in middle school um, seventh and eighth grade English language arts so our our journey brought us to lots of different places Mm -hmm. for a summer we went and taught um, in the Indian Ocean in Madagascar or right off of Madagascar where reunion the Seychelles Mm -hmm. Um, and so we did that, and we had a lot of adventures at the beginning, and teaching was our avenue to have all those adventures. So we went to lots of different places and taught yeah. in a lot of different app, like situations and How with different people. How do you feel people. like you've been able to use those different mm-hmm. experiences then in your classroom here? So, um, and I know that later we're going to be talking about literacy, but there's, there's part of, for me, why why English? Why, yeah. why reading yeah. and writing instead yeah. of, I love art too, and I love teaching musical theater. I did yeah. that for 10 years, and I was in theater myself. And so which of those do you pick? And I, what I love about literacy is having kids be able to access not just seeing their own perspectives in the world, but other people's perspectives in the world. And so what's really helped me um, through all of my experiences is that I actually have experiences to draw from to help Mm -hmm. kids Mm -hmm. see and navigate through what life is like seeing through a different lens and so um when we were in Alaska we were in an award-winning 
um, district called Chugach School District, and they were truly student-based, and Mm -hmm. their standards-based system was no grades, no grade levels. Kids progressed through based Mm -hmm. on their, their, yeah, Yeah. them being able to access the the grade level material. Mm -hmm. Um, And so the only reason that they were grouped with like peers is because of developmentally, you know, Mm -hmm. if you're not great at math, you're not going to be in in a 16 year old in Mm -hmm. with fourth graders because developmentally that's inappropriate. Yeah. But, um, but they moved through their, their grades and grade levels at their pace. And so it was there that I really got challenged to, take a critical look at how we do school Mm -hmm. and what true student-based education looks like. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's been really fun and challenging bringing that experience with me into more traditional public school settings. And I've thought a lot about sometimes maybe wanting to be at a charter school and blah, 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 Mm -hmm. but I don't. I don't want to because Mm -hmm. I want to try to use my experience Mm -hmm. in a public school setting to help us move and shift with the way that education is moving and shifting, Mm -hmm. um, to that, to that place. So was there a a country or an, or a school district that you were in that you're like, ah, this is, this is, you know, so unique and so different that I wish, you know, more educators in the U S would know about this. Mm -hmm. So, um, It wasn't when we were in the Peace Corps. Mm -hmm. That was a really very traditional Mm -hmm. system that the Solomon Islands had adopted from um, Britain. And Mm -hmm. it was really like, if you didn't pass your your grade level tests at the end of elementary, then middle, um, you were done with school. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that one was really, I was, that one was shocking. Mm -hmm. Um, But the one in Alaska is Mm -hmm. the one that, with that I wish the movement could Mm -hmm. move towards. So there's a national organization called Education Reimagined Mm -hmm. and they're out of DC and they're trying to get all these pockets of schools that are doing true student-based learning Mm -hmm. to start communicating with each other. And so they're bringing them all together. And because of my involvement in Alaska, I heard of Education Reimagined and now I'm part of that Mm -hmm. that movement to, to start getting schools and districts to to start seeing the possibilities mm-hmm. of of true student based learning, mm-hmm. yeah, and leadership in your learning. There's a lot of ownership when you have that um, set up. Like, how have you seen kids thrive in that model? So when kids are truly able to embrace what they know mm-hmm. and learn and and need to know to progress that starts becoming a responsibility that's them on them Mm -hmm. and they stop playing the game of school and just doing school to get through it and they start actually owning it Mm -hmm. and when that happens it's pretty cool and in in a system that way too um with the stakeholders with our whole community and the the school board members they actually own it also Mm -hmm. and so parents know where kids are and where they need to progress to truly um Instead of just maybe letting kids have their, you know, eight to three Mm -hmm. experience and and then we have our separate home lives. It's just, it's really Mm -hmm. intertwined with each other. And so that's been great trying to figure out how to bring that everywhere. (laughs) So I know part of your story too has been to be in one school for quite a few years and you've made Mm -hmm. a big shift this year to opening a brand new school. Mm -hmm. So... What are some of the, like, what inspired you to make that shift, first mm-hmm. of all, like, to take that challenge on, and then what have been some of the some of the fun parts and maybe some of the challenging parts of that this year so far? Cool. Well, so some of the reason that I, that I was like, okay, I was at my last school for 13 years teaching eighth grade, and I loved it, and I loved my musical theater partner who was the choir director there, and we put on so many musicals, and I, it was a family. It was a big family, and there was a big shift in our district that, um, that moved a lot of our, like, the kids that were our neighborhood school kids. It was shifting kids all over, mm-hmm. so our, our school really was, um, got split apart, and not out of meanness or anything, but just out of, like, 
you know, yeah, dollars yeah. follow kids. And so we got to move people around. And I thought, if there's a time for me to just try a new adventure, mm -hmm. what might that be? And obviously, from what I've said about my past, mm -hmm. I like new adventures. <laughs> so for me to even be there for 13 years, I was like really proud of myself. <laughs> um, but um, so there's no like hard feelings, mm -hmm. nothing from, from jumping ship. I was like, <clears throat> maybe I just want to try being somewhere different and trying mm -hmm. something new. And what might that be like to open a new school? And mm -hmm. going back to what you asked about... <clears throat> bringing experiences with me, I was like, wow, well, I really looked into the philosophy of the new admin team and how my new principal was thinking about how he wanted to be able to have a middle high school blend mm -hmm. um, in the same building. And I thought this might be the place where I can mm -hmm. start bringing some of yeah. my background and experience and and start maybe trying to have this be the school and the philosophy where some of that might actually be really great and a benefit. Um, not that it wasn't welcomed anywhere, right? Because it was always welcomed mm -hmm. everywhere. But I just thought, ooh, this might be a really neat opportunity mm -hmm. for me. And so, um, so I applied and got hired and now I'm at a new place and it's a middle high and, um, and it's so far, there are challenges with opening a new school. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's also really getting me to hone into like, who am I and what's my philosophy yeah. about education and learning and literacy and being with kids and being part of a learning community with my colleagues. And what is that? What might that be? And where maybe I haven't explored that for a while because I've been in the same place for a little while. So I think change and movement is sometimes really great for everybody for mm -hmm. all of us yeah absolutely yeah. well Tammy thank you so much for sharing your origin story we learned a lot from you and particularly are jealous of your experiences <laughs> yeah. in so many different places but thank you thank you mm -hmm. absolutely we look yeah. forward to continuing the conversation with Tammy um, on our next episode mm -hmm. where we dive into middle school literacy if you like what you heard today find us on Facebook like and subscribe also our YouTube channel and we're also available on your favorite podcasting app.